Let's talk about witches and witchcraft. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about the word witch? Most of you might think of an old crone with a long pointy nose, someone who has loose black clothes and a long pointy black hat, someone who makes bubbling potions made out of questionable ingredients and flies around on a broomstick laughing like a maniac. The others might think about those attractive cosplayers that you find on the internet. When you look up the term witches on the internet, you might either stumble across a Wikipedia article talking about the movie Witches starring Anne Hathaway, or you might stumble across a page that refers to witches as a mythical creature. What if I told you that witches weren't mythical or fictional after all? What if I told you that witches exist among us right now at this very moment? What if I tell you that you're looking at one right now? Do not panic. I'm not going to sacrifice any of you to Satan today. <laughs> I am here to clear this misconception regarding witches and witchcraft. So, what are witches? What am I? How does one become a witch? Witches are normal human beings who live their lives just like an average human does. Witches or pagans are generally those who do not follow Christianity and practice witchcraft. We aren't evil, cruel beings as we're usually portrayed to be. I personally like to identify as a soul who was reincarnated as a human in order to serve a purpose for my earth and fellow creatures. Now to answer the question about how one can become a witch, the answer is quite simple. You just become one. Anyone can become a witch. You just need to identify as one, relate with the ideologies and beliefs, and follow the basic rules of witchcraft. So what are these rules, one may wonder? There is only one important rule that exists that you must remember. This rule is called the law of three. It's more of a reminder than it being a rule. This rule states that whatever energy that you put out into the world will come back to you multiplied by three. That is, it will strike you back with thrice the intensity. So if you're doing something positive for yourself or someone else, the same positive energy will strike you back with thrice the intensity. Whereas if you're doing something negative or doing harm unto others, the same negative energy will strike you back with thrice the intensity. The individual can then decide what to do and how to act based upon this rule. There aren't any restrictions imposed by the religion as such. Modern witchcraft is a green religion. That means it is an earth-based tradition. As witches, we walk along with the nature and the earth in order to better ourselves and the lives around us. We walk along with the cycles of nature and the seasons. We're also very careful about our impact on the ecosystem, and we try to do the least amount of harm as we can as we go about with our lives. We cannot talk about witches and witchcraft without talking about magic and spellcraft. Magic is real too, but it's not in the form or way that you think it's like. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I cannot turn humans into toads or vice versa. Magic works on the principle of the law of attraction. Now, I do not know if you've read this book, but The Secret is a pretty famous book that you can find on the shelves of almost every bookstore out there. So this book was what introduced me to this principle for the first time. So in a nutshell, this book spoke about how the universe will give you anything you want as long as you manifest it the right way. Now, when I read about this concept for the first time, I was a little skeptical. All I had to do was ask, that's it. It just seemed too good to be true, so I dismissed it and moved on. A few months later, I stumbled across this other book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Now, this book spoke about how I could change aspects about your life, your personality, and even your physical features by training your subconscious mind. Now, this book seemed more believable as it was more scientific in its approach. But as I continued reading this particular book, I realized that the concept discussed in this book was a lot similar to that discussed in The Secret. Both books spoke about changing aspects about your life and your personality in ways that you never thought you could. The Secret spoke about this along the lines of the universe, while the power of your subconscious mind spoke about this along the lines of training your psyche. I also realized how I was wrong about The Secret not being scientific enough. I just had to read the lines more clearly. The Secret spoke about the universe as this all-giving energy. Energy. Science talks about energy. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It was all about this energy that we gave out, and this was what we would attract. And this is also where we go back to the law of three that I discussed earlier. Now, this law is mainly applied when you cast spells or perform rituals. How do you cast a spell? I'll tell you. 
So what us witches do is that we channelize energy from within ourselves and our surroundings in order to manifest what we want. A lot of witches use crystals, stones, and herbs in order to channelize this energy better. Now this energy could either be positive, that is to pass on love and warmth to someone else, to cleanse a space, or to heal or protect oneself. Or it could be negative, that is to bring someone else down, to destroy someone's life, to use it for one's own advantage by, bring, by bringing someone else down. Now these kind of negative energies that are used in spells, <laughs> like curses, are called hexes or kala jadu as it's called in Hindi. I hate to break a little bubble about hexes not being real, but it does work. A lot of people in India practice tantric magic, and these rituals often involve life and blood sacrifices. Earlier this year, a seven-year-old girl was sexually assaulted and had her liver stolen away from her for human consumption as a part of a tantric ritual in Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh. A seven-year-old, a 14-year-old boy sacrifices a seven-year-old neighbor as a part of a tantric ritual in Bengal. A single divorced mother burned her eldest son by burning him with ghee and other spices. And it was because of these rituals that witchcraft has a negative stigma attached to them. However, according to the rule of three that I discussed earlier, if you use hexes onto someone else, you will be met with more destruction than you meant to cause upon the other person. So a lot of witches are against its usage and prefer working with nature instead of working against it. So that's all there is to casting spells. It's all about using the right affirmation along with the right energy. A place where a lot of us go wrong while praying is that we do not pray using the right affirmation. For example, a lot of us might pray saying something like, please help me score good grades for my upcoming examinations. Now this statement shows uncertainty. It isn't strong enough to attract anything. The right way to pray is by using the right affirmation. So going by the same example, the right way to pray would be by saying something like, thank you for helping me score good grades for my upcoming examinations. Now this statement shows high certainty and gratitude. And this is where we move on to our next important topic that is gratitude. I've hardly seen anyone who actively practices gratitude these days. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm guilty of doing the same too. I forget about the things that I have. I, f I forget to be grateful for the things that I own and possess, and I end up whining and cribbing about the things that I do not have. Human beings are turning more selfish and materialistic as the days go by, but I do not solely blame the common population. Our education system itself focuses on getting good scores and grades. Everyone is in this constant pressure of wanting to score the best and never settling for this. And this mindset of always wanting more has been instilled in the minds of people ever since they were young. No one asks a child to stop and to reflect upon themselves and to be grateful for what they have. No one stops to appreciate what they have. When you practice gratitude, you start being more aware about your possessions. You start handling things more carefully. The way you treat and talk to the people in your life changes. You start appreciating the smallest things in your life. You start growing content with yourself and others. And this is such an important thing for us at this moment, especially when most of us are run by this consumptionist mentality, thanks to the influence of mass media. We always want more. We end up comparing ourselves to each other, and this leads to jealousy. Jealousness is one of the main motives for why people put hexes onto each other. It's time that we break free from this prison that mass media and these companies have instilled upon us and start reflecting on ourselves and our actions. Let's talk about something lighter for a change. I'm pretty sure most of us watch movies and shows on television, Netflix, and other streaming sites. Now, I don't know if this applies to every single one of you, but when I watch a new show or an anime, I start stealing personality traits from the characters and start incorporating them into my own. Kaneki Ken and Light Yagami have these really intense and intimidating personalities that I just wish I had. Anyways, so modern witchcraft has a similar concept in the form of a patron god or a goddess. When you think about the word God, you think about this mighty, powerful being that you need to bow down to and fear up to some extent. But the idea of a patron god or goddess in modern witchcraft is pretty different. Your patron god or goddess could be a being from any pantheon of your choice. Norse, Celtic, Greek, Roman, Hindu, any pantheon of your choice. It is a being that you relate to the most and want to be like. For me, it's Shiva from the Hindu pantheon, and Bastet and Sekhmet, the two feline goddesses from the Egyptian pantheon. These three figures inspire me to be the best version of myself, and their principles are what guides me in life. 
Your patron god is your friend, your mentor, and your guide, and not a mighty superior being that you bow down to. Modern witchcraft also tends to personify non-living elements of the earth in human form. For example, the earth and the moon are seen as goddesses, while the sun is seen as a god. This is because as humans tend to empathize better with other humans more than with any other species. When we see them as fellow human beings, we start treating them and interacting with them in a better way. This also goes hand in hand with the motive to conserve and protect our planets that as witches hold in our hearts. We also believe that human beings are of equal value to all other living creatures. We aren't superior or entitled in them in any way or form. We do not have the rights to steal or take away the lives of another living being. This is the reason why most witches are either vegan or vegetarian. And I'm not going to lie, I do consume meat occasionally. But there was this incident that occurred during the days, the summer of 2020. So my mom had cooked chicken at home and I was super excited that day. But as I was eating my food, I suddenly had this vision of this little baby chicken hatching out of her egg, growing into this beautiful hen, until she was put into a tiny cramped up cage along with the other hens, put in the back of a truck, brought to a slaughterhouse, where they spent their last remaining days with their freedom taken away from them, until it was this particular hen's day to be slaughtered and killed, only to be one meal of a day of my life. I felt this guilt, regret, and grief consume me. I couldn't enjoy my food anymore. And that was the day that I started being more conscious and wary about every life that existed around me. I started making sure that I did not accidentally step on any ants when I would walk. I started making sure that I did not accidentally harm any other living being or human around me. That was the day I realized the value of life. Now, I'm not going to lie. I may have taken my own life and body for granted at times. I'm still on the journey of developing self-love, taking time for yourself, taking care of yourself, developing empathy for yourself, and connecting with yourself is a very important part of being a witch. How can you do good for the earth and your fellow living creatures if you aren't healthy and in the right state yourself? Lighting candles, meditating while having a face mask on, and dancing around your favorite songs are also very important. Appreciating your inner masculinity and femininity your body and the functions of your body are very sacred to the craft. The world that we are living in right now makes us feel guilty for taking breaks and for taking care of ourselves. So using this as an excuse to take care of yourself really helps with the guilt. Modern witchcraft is actually a really old religion and it existed before Christianity was born. This tradition that existed centuries ago is now starting to come to light again. 0.4% of Americans, or 1 to 1.5 million people of this earth, identify as a witch. Because this is what we need in order to start taking care of ourselves, our environment, our fellow living beings, and human beings, of course. Our earth is dying. Humanity is losing its true essence. It's time to start reevaluating our current systems and beliefs. This is our chance to change, to evolve, and to ascend. Thank you.